<laughs> Hi, I'm Matt. <laughs> I'm not Tom. And this is a park bench. Tom is still frolicking in the Arctic with an astronaut. So today I am joined by Iwana. Hello, Iwana. Hi, Matt. Bring it in, man. <laughs> And the reason I have a wanna here is because you have asked me before many times what I do for work. Not not in general. What do you do again? I'm a broadcast engineer. Yeah, what, what, do you do? what do you do? Oh you're a broadcast I'm engineer a broadcast too. Engineer. What a coincidence. Wow, really? <laughs> I thought I would bring along a wanna here who I worked with for a number of years. And we could talk Don't about say what our ages. Hmm? Don't say our ages. We don't have ages. We're, we're beings without age. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you do on an average day? Well, t um, Tom, Tom. I'm not Tom. I'm Matt. I'm confused. You're Matt. <laughs> You're I'm meant to be Tom. <laughs> so it's a matter and of make, making sure you people who are listening to the radio can hear what's going out on the radio. Yes. And we have studios and studios of presenters doing many radio stations worth of stuff each and they're surrounded by equipment <laughs> and those yes. people are generally hired to be funny and entertaining and uh, somehow they have to get know how to use this equipment and it has yeah. to work and we are there to, to make, make it that work and yeah. make it happen so there are two different types of broadcast there's the normal one that's live in a studio so in, in our base station yeah. um, everyone has their normal home and then every so often, maybe a sponsor sponsors something cool for us to do, or there's an yeah. event on. We will go to the place and broadcast from the place. Yeah. So, LBC, one of the stations I work for, is a news-led station. They follow politi political things. Political 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 things. So, <laughs> if there's stuff happening in Parliament, we will rock up down by Parliament, set up a load of microphones, and broadcast from there for the day. Now, there's the day-to-day -day stuff, which is waiting around, waiting around for things to break, um, showing people how to use the stuff, new people, and sort of put a bit of training, a bit of maintenance. Everyone loves a bit of maintenance. Yeah, and there's some fixing headphones. Headphones are very good things at breaking, so we spend a lot of time fixing, fixing headphones. headphones. Now, there, there's what I would call the exciting part is the outside broadcast, as I just explained. Yeah. Generally um, get to think on the spot. Think on the spot a lot. And... You have to work out. Everywhere is different, so you get to kind of plan everything. And it's quite good fun. So the... You probably don't... Can't think of exactly what we might need to plan. So if you're doing an no, outside broadcast, yeah. what, what do you look for? What do you look for? Like how you're getting it from A to B? In the sense of, not the kit, the broadcast itself, so whether you're using like an ISDN, IP, anything else, and where it is. Like the other day someone wanted to broadcast from a moving boat, which was <laughs> quite, quite a challenge. Now um, the, the, the old-fashioned way of broadcasting, I say old-fashioned, the, the, the tried and tested way of broadcasting from anywhere random is to get a, an ISDN line installed, which is like a high-quality phone line. Yeah. Or really it's low quality data line. line. Yeah. Which you can put high quality audio over and no one will be able to tell from the quality that you're somewhere else. You can't get them on boats. No, not really. <laughs> also, satellites lose satellites. Satellite dishes lose satellites if you move. Oh, yes. So you'd kind of have to stop the boat, I suppose. <laughs> but we have this modern age where everything is 4G. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in London. Except, except in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> oh, I suppose. Yeah, that wouldn't work either. So a lot of the stuff these days I do is over 4G. Yeah. Rock up in a pub and in Birmingham. Turn on a... a media port, maybe. Yeah, which is a magic box, which, you know, when you've got bad signal on your phone, it says you've got full, four bars, but you still haven't got any signal. You can get magic boxes, which have, like, four different networks worth of 4G in them. You can even put like an internet line in. Yeah, you can you put all the internet in, into one box and it'll use whichever one's working. It binds them all together, doesn't it? I think it can be set up in multiple different ways. Excellent. I think, yeah, I think I was shouts out, out over all of them at the same time. Yeah. So then whichever one gets the packets back first, uses it. Fair play. Fair play. So, 
recently I've done a load of stuff in pubs around in the country. Pubs. Which is quite a simple setup. You turn up yeah. with some microphones and some way of it getting back in a mixer to mix it all together. Yeah, whereas we have this crazy brand called Absolute who want to do crazy things like setting up a music festival in a listener's garden. Oh, so wow. what happens is for about two weeks, listeners enter their gardens into a competition by sending pictures of said gardens. And the only term and condition is you have to have high-speed internet. <laughs> so then you can broadcast so it. So they can broadcast it. And then whoever wins it will set up a festival in their garden, sponsored by Wix. <laughs> <laughs> so Wix builds some decking and a man comes and builds a stage. And the man in charge of the music at Absolute books a band. Huh? And the band rock up and do a session in the listener's garden. And they book this, like, posh butcher that... <laughs> <laughs> of all the places up. I was expecting you to go, it was not Posh Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> so this Posh Butcher gets booked every year and he rocks up with a little stand and his Posh meat and does like a crazy barbecue. Oh, brilliant. Like, you know, festival food. And they all have crazy absolute related names like the dishes. And, is the, the, and that's all live on the radio? That's all live on the radio, yeah. But yeah, pubs, they sell beer. Yeah, that I've, sounds better. Uh, in fact, if you click a link up there or down there, I will upload a video. I did a time lapse nice. of me setting up um, in a pub in London earlier last month. I think I did a time lapse of that, so I can upload that, so you can see what setup goes into that kind of thing. Oh, and good. I've got I've got one. I did an, an outside broadcast in Hong Kong at the beginning of the year. Nice. How did that go? It's an amazing place to go for just a couple of days. Well, no, I'm not saying don't... What, what? I'm, I'm saying that's an amazing place to go, but I was only there a couple of days. Oh. But I'm Hang glad on. I went. Isn't the flight like... 13 hours, one way, 11 the other. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so I think we well, had Jack Black on the show, who was in Kung Fu Panda, and he yeah. challenged them to go and find a panda or something. Ah. Did they find a panda? Yeah. Excellent. In Hong Kong. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Where was that video of the panda in the zoo? Wasn't that like somewhere in China? The panda there the, was... There was a sneezing panda and I think that was yeah. around there as well, yeah. Good stuff. Didn't, didn't you do a broadcast somewhere in Dubai where you had to hug a penguin? Yeah, yes. Like a, a couple of years ago we didn't... We, I didn't have to hug a penguin. I think the penguin was complicit. <laughs> At least I hope the penguin was complicit. It certainly it seemed like it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a crazy place. We, um, they've got a ski centre. Dubai, middle of summer. You know, forty degree 40 heat degrees. outside, minus two inside in this ski centre, and they have a a a penguin. Uh, what's the word when they keep them because of nature dying out, kind of thing? What's endangered. The, they weren't exactly endangered, but you know when like when a zoo keeps them to protect them kind of thing. They had one of them for penguins. I nearly said listed building, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> List, it's a penguin. Li we, they had some listed penguins. <laughs> and oh. they, yeah, they would bring them out and let them run around by your feet. And then Amazing. there's one of the tame ones would stand there and let you hug it. <laughs> Love it. I'm sure there's Why a photo not? I can put here. <laughs> Proof that it actually happened. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Why not? Uh, for those kind of things, if you're wondering how they work, Generally, we rock up in a hotel, yeah. and hotels generally have internet. So use the internet in the hotel, build a studio in the hotel room, time lapse of that. Um, Solid plan. And it just sort of goes from there. As long as you've got a microphone and way of mixing microphones together and an internet connection, you can pretty much broadcast from anywhere. Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. So that's, we've, we've talked about what we do day to day. We've yeah. talked about outside broadcast which is my favourite bit about the job yeah uh, you also do a lot of live sessions yeah and that's good fun that's when bands come into the studio and they record a live session and when it's mixed and ready to go and approved by the label it goes on there and then we've got a nice video team and they film it all and it goes on YouTube and it's all good so yeah with that um, you basically go to the head of music will book a band and he will send them off a form 
that they fill in and say this is what we're bringing. So you, you know what they're going to bring, yeah. so you know how to record what they're bringing totally, and totally. deal with it and fit it all into the space. Absolutely, and, and what we do that's uh, different to each brand's different. So Kiss and Planet Rock will have just sessions with the band and you pre-record it and then it's done. But Absolute have an audience where you can't buy the tickets, you have to win the tickets. Okay, yeah. So when you're doing that, you've got to kind of set up the band and put the microphones up and get them ready to record. Uh, sound check the band until they're happy, do their monitors so they can hear themselves back. So it's like a gig. Yeah. But in a studio. So you're still getting like studio quality recordings, but you get an audience there. So we've got to run a PA as well. So you've got to mix the PA as well. And then you multi-track everything. So that means you're mixing at least three things at once. You've, yeah. got, to, you've got to mix what the audience wants to hear on the radio so you can hear every instrument. Uh, you do that afterwards because you've multi-tracked it. Oh, you'll record it rather than yeah. do it live. Okay. And then you've got to mix the different headphones for all of the yes, people playing. Be indeed. Because the singer will want to hear themselves. Yeah. And, and the guitarist, will, everybody wants to hear themselves. More than everything else and then they yeah. can tell what they're doing. Yeah. And then... And then there's the PA, so then PA the people in the room watching it can hear. Watching it hear. So it's like, the good thing about that is you can mix the monitors, so the headphones, beforehand, and then when they're sound checking, you can get your levels right for like, you know, the multi-track, so you can mix it afterwards. And then you can mix the PA whilst they're sound checking, and then you don't touch that whilst the audience are there. So it's kind of like... You get it all right beforehand yeah, you and get like it save all... it as a preset kind I think, of thing. I think we have done it live on air before as well, where you had to mix three things at once. This was an outside broadcast in a pub in Birmingham and initially it was meant to be a man with a guitar and this grew legs. It was meant to be a man with a guitar in the middle of the show playing a session, playing two songs to the audience who were there so you had to mix his monitors, the PA in the room for the audience and then mix the on air so it <laughs> goes live on air if you see what I mean. Initially it was meant to be a man with a guitar so it's like two faders done. Uh, Session grew legs, <laughs> and the man with the guitar turned down to beat Cages from the Seraphonics. Okay. And then they added Adam, who's the guitarist, <laughs> and then the bassist joined in, and then all of them, minus the drummer, were in, so the drummer wanted to join in, so it was quite a funny social media photo, because they'd taken a picture of the band, photoshopped Cut Kelly out basically and just pasted a picture of Kelly going like he'll be doing a session in a pub in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> and then they gradually added all the band members back in. <laughs> so yeah, it ended up being mixing the Seraphonics live in a pub in Birmingham on air to the audience and their monitors. <laughs> so it's like. So I'd say a lot of what we do is bodging and winging it. We wing it a lot, <laughs> very much. Because yeah. so much stuff's ad hoc. Things come in like quickly, I mean, you do it once and you never do that thing again. I mean, you can do it properly and wing it, but then you do have to come up with creative ways of doing things once. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's sort of a using experience of stuff you've done in the past yeah, massively. to do this random thing that's turned up that you go, okay, uh, well, what did we have the other... Uh, a couple of years ago, I think that was while you were still working with me, someone said, yeah, we've got a goat in the studio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we need to put a GoPro and a microphone on it. Went, what? Why? Nicole Scherzinger? What? Why? Okay. <laughs> we... Wasn't there a bucket as well? Didn't yeah. they milk the goat? Oh, Nicole Scherzinger was milking a goat yes. on Cathedral FM, I think. How did that work on there? I can't remember. I can't remember the why, but we, we, it, we got it. We, we did it. True. <laughs> what can you do? Like, you know... I don't think we've ever had, like, livestock in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> I mean, we've had the reindeer in reception before and the, and the, and the box of puppies. <laughs> That's something, the creativity of some of the people we work with. Yeah. Like, do you, in, do you, in, in your place of work, do you wander around and just see random stuff happening? Absolutely. Oh. Like, two of our producers have an eBay addiction and... <laughs> They once rang us and said they bought a fax machine off eBay okay. and they wanted it in the studio so listeners could fax them in. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, randomly we had to set up this fax machine. So yeah, cool. that's good. Now, that's good. if any of you are thinking what we do sounds a bit fun and like you want to have a go, uh, we should probably 
say how, 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 how to end up doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how did you get into this? It's a good question. I was working in a recording studio and I was doing loads of sessions and then they based the radio station next to it. Okay. This was in uni. Was that a student I was working station? for uni. Yeah, it was a student station. They based it there and I had to wire it. Oh, right. And then I had to show everyone how to use, like, the radio studios and I kind of ended up doing that. So then I ended up doing sessions live on air at the time because it was like a student station, so it didn't really... Yeah. Learned a lot about sessions on air yeah. and things and recording and things and getting it right and things. A, a, a lot of people in radio seem to have come from student radio student or community radio. radio. It's or, yeah, it was a community station, actually. It's, it seems to be very... It's all very experience-based. Yeah, and massively. Just rather than, of... like work experience being the only avenue for getting experience. There are so many student stations, community stations yep. all around the UK and I assume everywhere Hospital else as well. Hospital radio as well. Yes. Where you, you can pop in in your spare time and have a go. Yeah, I, totally. I, I probably mentioned this on here before, but I was at University Radio York at oh, uni. Nice. I did that with Tom um, and Gary and Chris of Citation Needed. That's how we all know each other. Nice. I, I did did shows there luckily recordings of that don't exist anymore excellent um, hide the evidence and then stuff was broken and I I was doing an electronics degree I thought yeah I could probably fix that and um, that's how it all <laughs> yeah that's where it I began never, I never knew that story good story man well now you know now I know <laughs> brilliant awesome well there we have it thank you very much for joining me thank you Matt that's awesome uh, this has been Iwana not Tom. And <laughs> this is Matt. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good fun, actually.